Welcome into 5 Wide. Today's video, we're looking at my top 10 power ranked offenses heading into the 2023 season. Just last week, we did our top 10 defenses as well. So be sure to go check out that video. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoy. Like the video. Of course, let me know your top 10 on offense. And as well, if you haven't checked out and you are going to check out the defense video, if you got team my top 10 on offense, team my top 10 on defense, it'll probably give you a good idea of how I feel about some of these teams and their chances at winning a Super Bowl this season. Before we get into the top 10, be sure to go check out Peace Collective if you're looking to get some of your favorite favorite gear uh, for some of your favorite teams. They got awesome vintage merchandise, the type of merchandise where if you're going out to the bar, going out to a party, it's a type of gear that a random guy, a random person is going to come up to you and ask you, where did you get that? So if you want to go check them out and use promo code ownersbox10, you're going to get 10% off your purchase over at Peace Collective. I'll include that link down below in the description as well in the pinned comments. Let's get into my top 10 offenses. Of course, we'll be counting it down from the number 10 spots, starting with the Detroit Lions. It's time to give the Lions their respect here. This offense was a very very, very good in 2022 and kind of flew under the radar up until probably the latter half of the season. They averaged 26.6 points per game. That was fifth in the NFL. Very, very good. Keeping their offense coordinator, Ben Johnson, in my mind is a big reason for having them here at the top. This was a team that was able to convert their red zone opportunities. That is going to make a major difference when it comes to being an elite offense in this league. They were scoring a touchdown on over 66% of their red zone trips, which was top four in the NFL. Of course, the loss of Jamison Williams and the fact that he's going to be missing for the first little bit here of the regular season because of his suspension. Puts a damper on things heading into the season. Puts that preseason hype down a little bit lower, but they do add another excellent pass catching option in Jameer Gibbs out of the backfield. He should be a dynamic player for them and make up for that loss early in the season. And really it's a credit to Ben Johnson and his offensive philosophy and his scheme to be able to be so successful offensively when this team was missing key pieces at a large portion of the season. We lost TJ Hawkins and they traded him away earlier in the year, but Amara St. Brown has been an excellent, excellent piece of their offense a monster uh, and one that can really provide significant contribution at a really high volume that he demands so he can make up for things. But the trio of Gibbs, St. Brown, and Jamison Williams in the second half of this season should be fantastic. And another thing for me that has me ranking this team so high is Dan Campbell's focus on the trenches that he talked about when he was named the head coach to this team are really starting to come together. This team was a top seven unit in adjusted line yards, great as a pass blocking unit, great on the ground, converting those scores. The Detroit Lions are a top 10 offense, guys. This is for real. At number nine, I have the Seattle Seahawks. The big question heading into 2023 is can Geno Smith repeat his performance this season? He was so, so good in 2022 and really in the latter half of the season fell off a little bit, still in the upper half of the league in a lot of major categories. But when you look at the season from a whole, he was leading the league in completion percentage, almost 70%, 69.8%, the number one passer in the NFL. His 30 touchdowns had him fourth in the NFL and he was sixth in passer rating on the season. The pieces are in place here. He can do this again when you talk about the tight end spot with Noah Fant, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, and now the addition of Jackson Smith and Jigba in the first round. An excellent slot receiver to be able to plug in, who we didn't see a lot of last season at Ohio State, but the year prior in a very uber competitive wide receiver room, he was fantastic competing with Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave. Still managed to be incredibly productive. He has the same opportunity here with two fantastic and proven pass catchers in this league. He'll carve out a role for himself. He's a very, very skillful player at the position, a great route runner. So I love the weapons that he has. And of course, for this offense and the reason they were able to fast track this rebuild and be so successful last season was those two tackle spots that they hit with picks in Abraham Lucas and Charles Cross that has made this a really good unit. Probably not an elite unit from a protection perspective, but a very good one and one you didn't expect to see this season and why Geno Smith was so successful in 2022. Then you look to the run game. Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet make for a great duo in my mind. Kenneth Walker closed out the season with averaging in the last four games over 100 yards per game. Very, very good. An awesome runner for them. And then they add Zach Charbonnet out of UCLA, who is a really good pass catcher in Kelly's offense over there in California. So this is a really good duo at the running back spot. Three excellent wide receivers to get to. And we're just looking for Geno Smith to give us really anything that I think, you know, is close to his production from last season is going to have this team being a top 10 offense heading into this season. At number eight, I have the Jacksonville Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence looked like a completely different player, finally getting a competent head coach and play caller in Doug Peterson. He more than doubled his touchdown from 2021. He had 25 this past season from 12 the year prior and even better, cutting his turnovers and interceptions down by more than half. He had 17 in 2021 down to 
to just eight this past season. So you love to see that. This is only the third year in the league for Trevor Lawrence. There's plenty of growth to be had. He was completing his passes at a below 60% rate in 2021, went up to over 66% in 2022. And I think more than just the play calling, it also helped to add some competent pass catchers as well. Christian Kirk was that reliable option for him in the slot that he really utilized a lot the year prior, but didn't have that reliable player from a week to week basis. Evan Ingram, we always thought was a player that showed great signs of being a really quality offensive threat for this team. He's developed into much more of a, a slot receiver option than he does look like a tight end, but man, this guy is incredibly dynamic after the catch as well, so has two excellent options there. Also getting his, his teammate Travis Etienne back after missing his rookie season. He averaged 5.1 yards per carry and was very explosive last year. You know, he didn't get the full opportunity in the early part of the season with James Robinson uh, in the fold, but he was fourth or top five in breakaway run rate, so a ton of explosive plays he was able to make on the ground for this team. Expect that to continue this season as well, and then the biggest addition and the reason I have this as a top 10 offense is adding Calvin Ridley. His athleticism, his speed brings something that this team was missing in this past season and one that can really help them heading into this year to be more explosive. He averaged 15.3 yards per reception in the 2020 season. So if you want to add that explosivity, Ridley is definitely the guy to be able to do so. And this offense is built to build on what was a really good 2022 season as well. At the number seven spot, I have the Miami Dolphins. This was the most explosive passing offense in the league last season. I really don't think it was very close. Tua averaged 8.9 yards per attempt in 2022, led the league as well. His A dot of 10.1 yards was also second in the league. This team was able to create yards after the catch with Jalen Waddell, who was third in that department amongst all wide receivers. And then they were able to be incredibly explosive with both him and of course, Tyree Kill. Hill leaves Kansas City and then has the best season of his career. His 1,710 receiving yards didn't manage to lead the league, but by far his best output of his career. So these are two incredibly dynamic options for this this team and they add another dynamic player, Devon Achain. I don't know what his role is going to be like as a running back. This team probably won't run the ball all that well. I think Mike McDaniel really knows what this team is capable of when it comes to their protection and the run blocking unit. You will still see this team throw the ball at a high pace and they did it at an incredibly high level. I mean, we took drastic, drastic steps forward offensively from the previous seasons. We thought Tua, you know, being that early pick wasn't going to be able to live up to it in his career, but I mean, that's completely changed with McDaniel. This team was second in points above average per play last season, adding Devon Achain, like I mentioned is going to be another guy to be able to be explosive after the catch in the backfield. So I love what this team has between Waddle and Hill and now adding A-Chain and another year. That second year with McDaniel is going to probably see this offense improve somehow even further heading into the 2023 season. At number six, I have the Los Angeles Chargers. There are many, many things I think this team will improve on in 2023. We'll get to them. There are three real pillars here. The first one being health. There were a number of games missed from some of their premier players and forcing Justin Herbert to play with some lackluster weapons in 2022. Of course, Keenan Allen and Mike Williams missed significant time. Brandon Staley making that boneheaded mistake in the final week of the regular season by playing Mike Williams. Rashawn Slater missed a very good majority of the 2022 season with that torn pec. And then Corey Lindsley, the center, missed time too. And whenever he was out, this team was drastically different in protection. But they now add Quinton Johnston. And then most importantly, the offensive coordinator change was so, so needed for this team, which we'll get to momentarily. But let's talk a little bit about Justin Herbert and why I think he's set to have a massive bounce back year. Herbert was really unlucky in 2022. By far the most unlucky quarterback in the NFL. These numbers will definitely prove that. He had the lowest turnover worthy play rate at just 1.6%, but he threw 10 interceptions. There were a number of plays made that it was throwing the ball too hard and off his receiver's hands and unfortunately into the hands of a defender or a, a ball that, you know, was expected to be one that would either be caught or out of bounds. I don't know if you remember this, but there was a play that was made that was thrown to the end zone that a cornerback ran and out of bounds, jumped, tipped it back in bounds, and it was caught for an interception. There's a lot of unlucky plays that came Justin Herbert's way last season. But what I really like is Moore's addition at the offense coordinator spot. This was a horrendous rushing attack and made this team far too one-dimensional. That was their downfall, especially in the wild card game, was they could not run the football, forced to pass it, and that is a bad, bad recipe when it comes to holding on and protecting leads and killing games late. They were 22nd in EPA per rush last season. So that's a major problem that Moore has proven to be able to improve, of course, with his time with the Cowboys. And then as well, Justin Herbert is quite frankly, probably a top three quarterback in the NFL when it comes to pure arm talent. The guy can throw it at an incredibly high level. And this team had the fourth lowest average depth of target amongst 41 qualified QBs, Herbert was. That makes no sense. If your quarterback can make pretty much every throw on the football field, why are we only pushing the ball four yards down the field on each pass? So those are some ways that Moore is going to be able to step in and make them improve. If you look at Prescott, obviously had a lot of turnovers last
last season, but over the last couple of years, this was a really explosive offense in Dallas. So Moore's going to be able to improve those categories and the Chargers have all of the staff in place in terms of on the field to be able to produce as well. At number five, I have the Buffalo Bills. This is an offense led by Josh Allen who can make pretty much every play on the football field, either with his arms or with his legs. He had a league leading 7.4% big time throw rate that's tracked by PFF. He also had 34 completions of 20 plus yards. That was first at the position as well. So it can be very, very explosive. And then as well, which I really like in this league, um, when the big focus defensively is being able to generate pressure, that is how you win ball games on defense. This was one of the best players or quarterbacks in the league when it comes to pressure. He had a 52.2% completion percentage and as well, he averaged 8.2 yards per attempt, which led the NFL. He really makes those defenses pay against the blitz. So love Allen from that perspective. And then he of course has a premier player at the position when it comes to Stefan Diggs. He's able to be a downfield threat. He's able to be a player that can make plays after the catch and available in intermediate areas. And then also proven to want to be one of the best receivers when it comes to that red zone option as well. Uh, this is an offense last season, obviously took a bit of a step back. We obviously saw Josh Allen's turnovers come to fruition. He was 33rd in turnover worthy play rate. And he also had 14 interceptions, which was the third most in the league. So the turnover worthy play rate certainly matched those interceptions. These are, this isn't the guy that got unlucky. Like we talked about with Justin Herbert, he needs to do a better job taking care of the ball. And they really paid for it in the red zone, not being nearly as efficient when it comes to that touchdown perspective, something they can improve on this season. And my only question mark with this team really comes at the wide receiver position. I think Khalil Shakur is someone who's capable of stepping up and I would prefer to see him in that wide receiver two role for this team because Gabe Davis's inconsistency on a down-to-down -down basis is really my biggest problem when it comes to this offense. But Josh Allen is such an unbelievable quarterback and can really bring that level of play back up to what we've seen it prior uh, that this offense can get right back on track when it comes to his play. But offensively on the running back side of things, I like what they can do and bringing in uh, James Cook and Damian Harris. Damian Harris can definitely help them when it comes to alleviating that load for Josh Allen on the rushing side and help them be better in the red zone this season too. Coming in at number four is the Kansas City Chiefs. Yes, those same Chiefs led by the best quarterback in the NFL and Patrick Mahomes, who threw for over 5,200 yards last season and led the league with 41 touchdowns. What I also love to see was his pressure to sack rate, the lowest in the NFL. Teams were able to drum up some pressure against him, and when they did, they didn't always convert those into sacks. He could still make you pay and still make plays under pressure, which is a very important thing to look for when it comes to your quarterback. Uh, and then as well, getting to throw to probably the best pass-catching tight end in NFL history. He's gone seven straight seasons of 1,000-plus yards. That is three more than the next best tight end end in Tony Gonzalez and Rob Gronkowski who had just four apiece in their career. His 1,338 yards receiving last season was the second most of his career. So he's showing absolutely no signs of slowing down. We love to see that when it comes to keeping this offense in that upper echelon between these two players. But as well, what I really liked from last season is their rushing attack. Fourth in EPA per rush. I mean, Isaiah Pacheco actually giving them production out of the backfield is something we might not have seen since perhaps, I don't know, Jamal Charles maybe? This team was not able to run the ball for now a number of seasons. It was always the problem as for as long as Mahomes has been around and now they've seemed to find that answer. My biggest question marks and why I have them where I do outside of my top three, of course, how will the losses of both tackles impact them? They lose both Andrew Wiley and Orlando Brown Jr. and plug in Donovan Smith and Juwan Taylor, who are no slouches, but I think will likely be downgrades when it comes to protection for this team. And you know, we saw that be a bit of their downfall uh, in those years prior, two years prior when they did lose to the Bucks in the Super Bowl. So I think these are still quality options, but can they still play? at that same level because this was a really good unit protecting Mahomes last season. And then the other question for me comes to everywhere else except for tight end and running back. That receiver room does not look good. There's way too many questions at this spot and I don't see a lot of reliability. Tony has that injury history and injury frequency that I think at this point is very predictable. Expecting him to be able to be a major piece of this offense is hard to see. I mean, he wasn't able to do it in college very often. He's definitely not doing it in the NFL. Last season, he didn't touch more than 50% of snaps in any game. Then we have MVS, who's another inconsistent option for this team. He was bottom 10 in drop rate as well. Not someone you can rely on. Not someone capable of being a wide receiver one in this league. Then the player that I think has that potential to produce for this team is Sky Moore. The sophomore will need to be more impactful. He had a full season to be able to get into this offense. Really didn't happen much at all. Obviously, we, we saw him in the Super Bowl. Provide some spark for this team. Can he do it over the course of a full season? We will see. But again, the Chiefs, as long as Patrick Mahomes is a quarterback, are easily a top five offense. We've got the San Francisco 49ers coming in at number three. There is not a better skill position group in the NFL, in my opinion, when it comes to Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, George Kittle, and Brandon Ayuk. Debo averaged 8.9 yards after the catch last season per reception, leader in the NFL, even though coming off what he would say, and what we would probably agree, being a down season. So certainly expecting him to 
still be that impactful piece of this offense and being able to be explosive after the catch. And as long as Kyle Shanahan is in town and calling the plays, it seems like any quarterback can succeed. You dive into Purdy's numbers, and I really didn't think Purdy would be someone that could provide a high floor in this league uh, or a high ceiling, I guess I should say. But his numbers are great. 8.1 yards per attempt. That was third in the NFL amongst qualified quarterbacks. He completed over 67% of his passes, which was seventh in the NFL. And he was first in passer rating. He had a really good year coming in partway through the season. Whether it's him, whether it's Trey Lance, it's looking more likely that it's going to be Brock Purdy if he's healthy and available. He's going to have terrific players to get the ball to and a coach that really sets this team up to succeed. The running game was obviously great last season. That is my biggest question mark though. Can they stay playing at that really high level with the loss of Mike McGlinchey? I think they probably do when it comes to being led by Trent Williams on that left side. Everything's in place here. This team has so much talent at those skill positions. And of course, like I mentioned, maybe the best play caller in the league. So I love the 49ers heading into 2023. The team at number two is the Cincinnati Bengals having the best wide receiver corpse and duo in the league when it comes to Jamar Chase and T Higgins. But don't forget about Tyler Boyd as well. Probably one of the best wide receiver threes in this league, maybe outside of, I guess now the Seattle Seahawks, but they pair this excellent wide receiver corpse with the most accurate passer in the NFL. Joe Burrow completed 68.3% of his passes, which was second in the league, only behind Geno Smith and had the third lowest turnover worthy play rate. Just an incredible player. And as well, a lot of what he can do, you don't even see on paper when you look at how this team fared in that pass protection department later in the season and in seasons prior. He's just so, so smart with the football and puts a lot of opposing defenses in a spin cycle. But we got a nice, nice addition here at the left tackle spot with Orlando Brown coming in. That is a very sneaky addition for this team to be able to improve there. They battled a lot of injuries when it came to the playoffs and the postseason. If they stay healthy and if Orlando Brown is in the mix, this is going to be a really, really good unit. Something you couldn't say for this team for pretty much every season that Burrow's been in the league. The only thing missing here is the run game, which I think obviously the pass game is at such a high level that you can live with it. It's still a top two offense in my mind. The problem is they're bottom 10 in both stuff rate and hit at the line percentage and the second lowest broken tackle rate. So you had an offensive line that didn't block all that well. And then you have a running back who wasn't really able to create a lot of yards after contact with Joe Mixon, but Mixon's still a terrific pass catcher as well. So this offense doesn't necessarily, you know, with the Chargers, we talked about their running game struggles. Even if this team struggles to run the football, they're still going to be able to move the ball at an efficient rate thanks to Burrow's accuracy and what they can do out of the backfield in other ways. My number one offense heading into the 2023 season, and I think easily the most complete, is the Philadelphia Eagles. That offensive line that can just move mountains makes the offense move at such an incredible pace throughout last season, and I expect heading into this season, the number one pass blocking grade at 84.9 last season from PFF. Jalen Hurts was pressured on less than 30% of his dropbacks, and they also led the league in EPA per rushing attempt. Kind of seems like this offensive line, no matter who's running behind it or playing behind it, is going to be put in an incredible spot to be able to be successful. And it's a good thing because Jalen Hurts, my only problem I really have or can nitpick about this offense is he wasn't great under pressure and has proven that last season and the year prior, just a 45% completion percentage, which was 27th in the NFL and 24th in yards per attempt. So that's something to look out for. If this team struggles, that would be how I see it as if they're giving up a little bit too much pressure, but the pieces are still in place to be able to stay at that really high level with Jason Kelsey back as well. But the weapons are really, really good and right up there when it comes to competing with those San Francisco 49ers. AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, and Dallas Goddard are an excellent trio. The only questions really come at running back. We have DeAndre Swift and Rashad Penny, and it's kind of a perfect duo. It's just about whether or not these two stay healthy. DeAndre Swift was sixth in yards per route run last season. Very, very good at the running back spot as a pass catcher. And then Rashad Penny has been one of the most efficient running backs in the NFL since he arrived, even behind that Seahawks offensive line that really struggled with the exception being last season. He averaged 5.7 yards per carry in his career. This was also the second leading unit when it came to points per game. They averaged 29.1. They really managed to avoid a lot of turnover here. Andre Dillard really being the only impactful exit. Like I don't see uh, the loss of Miles Sanders being that impactful of an exit. Anyone can kind of run behind this offensive line in my mind. This is a really good unit. And in my opinion, the best in the NFL heading into 2023. Now that you know my top 10 offenses heading into this NFL season, would love to hear from you guys down below in the comments of where I went wrong and as well where you have your top 10, especially some teams you think were missing. Maybe you think it was uh, the Baltimore Ravens surprise to be missing was one I definitely was considering the New York Jets potentially. Regardless, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel as well if you enjoyed, and be sure to check out Peace Collective if you guys want to check out some of your favorite team's gear and vintage apparel heading into the season. As always, we appreciate you guys for watching, and we will see you on the next one.